What's up everybody, it's FLF back for another Light Up Babylon. Before we get started, be sure to hit the thumbs up, helps with the YouTube algorithm, subscribe if you're not already, and click the bell for notifications, that way you get notified when new videos get uploaded. Also, if you're looking for ways to support the channel, please sign up for the Patreon link below, you get exclusive content, weekly updates, and behind the scenes, also a 30% off discount on all merch like this, I've been dipped in blood hoodie. You can also support by copying merch as well, which is in the link down below, appreciate all you guys and I, I list out how much we actually make per purchase because it's uh it's built to ship to order essentially so very small margins these just are things that we help pour back into the ministry and shout out throne of grace clothing for this dope jesus hat so today i'm going to dive into something pretty straightforward and i think something that is worth talking about um, and that's going to be the three main reasons that i stopped listening to kendrick lamar now the reason i feel this is more relevant than maybe ever before is because as Christianity and topics about God come to the forefront of the conversation with artists like Kanye West, for example, and Chance the Rapper starting to introduce God more and more in their songs. I think it's important that we recognize what is genuine and what is not genuine and really make that distinction right off the bat. And when it comes to artists like Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, or other artists that might be seen as conscious or woke in an extent, we kind of take a lot of their content at face value without diving deeper to understand the core message of what they're saying or why they're saying the things that they're saying. Now off rip, a lot of people are gonna be like, okay, well, you don't really know Kendrick Lamar, you're not a fan, what does that mean? But the truth is I've been a Kendrick Lamar fan for a long time, since 2010, when I heard the first ever record, She Needs Me. That was the first time I ever heard Kendrick Lamar. And I remember he had a line like, um, look at her hips, I wanna be your pager. And to me that was like, whoa, that's such a dope line. And I became a fan ever since, attended his first show in Fort Lauderdale, Florida in 2011. And yeah, been uh, a huge Kendrick Lamar fan ever since. There's probably no other artist that I could recite the lyrics of and call back to the songs of more than Kendrick Lamar. The reason I preface that and give it a, you know, a, a level of context is because we talk about the reasons that I'm not listening to him anymore. They really build on one another. And I think if we were to look at the history of Kendrick Lamar as an artist, the Kendrick Lamar of 2015 is not the same Kendrick Lamar of 2022, naturally. And with that comes some questionable things that I think we need to be vigilant about, not only as Christians or believers, but also just general people who might consume music or consume content. So let's dive into it. Reason number one is, reason number one that I stopped listening to Kendrick Lamar is pretty straightforward, and it's because I've cut out almost, 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 if not 99.9% .9 of all the secular music that I'm listening to. Now, I, I don't lump Kendrick Lamar into that group just for the sake of lumping him in, but I have noticed in the last three or four years that the content has shifted pretty drastically from where it used to be to what it is now. Now, obviously we haven't heard a original album from Kendrick Lamar since 2017 with the Damn Project, but even since then, the Black Panther Project, the features that he's been on, I just see a progression of content that is less and less edifying as time has gone on. Again, take it for what it is, but I don't listen to a Kendrick Lamar song or feature in recent times and think, wow, that's a really edifying song or I really wanna commit this to memory or make this a part of my life. Naturally, as any Christian should, the more that you grow closer to God, the, wor the things of the world will grow strangely dim and you'll find it less appealing. And I think that's kind of what's happened with Kendrick Lamar is I've cut out more and more of the secular music. I'm really looking for things that just edify and feed my soul and feed me spiritually. And you might be asking, who do you listen to? Well, in that case, just to give you some high levels, there's some really great artists out there that I really enjoy the music of. Ishan Burgundy, um, Brian Trejo in Kingdom Music, um, Dylan Chase, No Big Deal, Mowgli the Iceberg. I can name off a lot of artists that I really enjoy their music, and the content itself is edifying, uplifting to Christ, and um, really points people to the cross. So there is great music out there that is worth your time, and uh, with that being said, that's one of the reasons that I've stopped listening to Kendrick Lamar. Reason number two, and this is a little bit more of a significant reason, is because in his most recent project, Dam, he really started incorporating a lot of biblical imagery, but not in a way I feel, and I think most people would agree, that really points people back to Christ, and instead kind of supplants Christ and supplants God and elevates himself. Now this could be taken a lot of different ways, but I think the most notable example of it is in the video of Humble. Now in the video of Humble, we have a lot of biblical scenes and biblical imagery that don't point back to Christ or don't point to God, but rather are used as a storytelling device, which I think ultimately takes away and kind of supplants God with this image of Kendrick Lamar. One notable image that we 
everybody could tell right away if you're a Christian believer is Kendrick Lamar dressed in uh, Pope or Catholic garb inside of a church. And as he's performing, a Holy Spirit is descending right above Kendrick Lamar, or in, excuse me, a dove in the shape of light, which we identify as the Holy Spirit that appeared at Jesus's baptism, appears above Kendrick Lamar and descending down. Now, really, what does that mean, right? That, that could mean so many things, and I think the metaphor used in the video and used in the song content for the song Humble is that he is the chosen one, right? He has been sent here to deliver this uh, content, to deliver this music. That being said, you know, you can kind of read between the lines and, and, you know, give creative liberty, but we see it repeated over and over again. In another scene, Kendrick Lamar is seen rapping with a few folks behind him with their heads wrapped and then flames on top of their heads. Now, again, if you're a Christian, this was a very clear image and easy to catch right off the bat. But this is essentially talking about the book of Acts when the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples and the apostles. Again, a significant use case because you have Kendrick Lamar rapping, these folks behind him with their heads on fire. And again, this tie in with the Holy Spirit related to, you know, what Kendrick Lamar is doing and how he's performing. Keep in mind the whole time that the song Humble is all about pride and it's actually about him telling you to humble yourself so that Kendrick Lamar can kind of let you know hey I am the Don I'm the goat I'm the best one here you need to be humble sit down be humble so Christ-like imagery biblical imagery Holy Spirit descending in two different ways but not pointing to God now when it comes to me as a believer I take things that are biblical or that associate themselves with Christ very seriously because the last thing that I want to do is misrepresent Christ by endorsing something that is not of Christ. And I think in the case with a music video like Humble, when we have this biblical imagery getting introduced and we don't condemn it or we don't dig deeper for why it's being used the way that it's being used, I think there's a very clear distinction that we need to make of what am I consuming? Now to tie this all into kind of point two, the use of biblical imagery and themes, Damn as an album is actually in so many ways telling the story of salvation in a, what I would say, somewhat distorted way. You have songs titled Yah, you have songs titled God, a number of other songs as well, but the storyline kind of walks someone through the process of them being shot and killed. Um, either they lead up to it or they end with it. And it's kind of the evolution of someone either finding God or someone either drifting away from God, whether the album is played front to back or back to front. Now, mind you, while all this is happening, I'm picking up on these cues. I'm picking up, picking up on the imagery that's being used in Humble. I'm picking up on the theme on the project. I still think that there are songs and content on that damn album and many of Kendrick's album, including Good Kid Mad City, Section 80, To Pimp a Butterfly, that really do highlight a message of salvation, a gospel-like message. But as I'm picking up on these things, I'm also contrasting them with the direction that Kendrick Lamar is heading. And what we've kind of found is that he's not heading to further enlightenment. He's not heading towards a situation where he's going to draw people closer to Christ, but instead just using biblical imagery and Christ-like elements to do a to tell a story, essentially. Humble might have been the best example of this because you have multiple times where biblical imagery is used to kind of denote Kendrick Lamar as some sort of Christ-like figure, when at the end of it, he's behaving in the opposite of what Christ would actually behave like. The cherry on top for the Humble video might be the fact also that Kendrick Lamar is seen seated at a table, which looks like the Last Supper, and he, of course, is in the middle, very similar to Leonardo da Vinci's depiction of the Last Supper with Christ sitting in the middle. Now, again, as literary or creative license goes, there is some leeway there, right? You have to kind of take it with a grain of salt as you're interpreting it. But when it becomes a consistent theme to someone who is clearly not ignorant of Christ-like or God-like things, you begin to question these things a little bit more. When we think of Christ as a figure, he came to serve. The Son of Man was sent to be a servant, and we are to serve others in that example, in, the, in that representation. In fact, Christ said that the last shall be first and the first shall be last. So we have these themes and this scripture that points to Christ, what his true intention is, how he would behave, and then you have that contrasted with how Kendrick Lamar is actually depicting it inside the video Humble and in many parts throughout the entire album of Damn. Now I can hear the rap critics saying, well, that's the whole point. Humble is meant to be this contradictory, you know, dichotomy, this oxymoron of this person saying, sit down, be humble, but really in actuality, they think they're so high, but really they're not. And that fits into the damn narrative. You could have a point, 
But I think this ties into the last reason why I won't be listening to Kendrick Lamar anymore. Um, and really kind of completes that entire arc for me of when I said, you know what, I'm gonna step away from this music entirely. Reason number three that I'm not listening to Kendrick Lamar anymore is due to his most recent feature that he did a song with Baby Keem on called Family Ties. Now taking away all of the negative content within the song, if we were just to subtract that, the non-edifying content, the fact that it is a feature for Baby Keem, if we were to take all that away and just say, okay, what's really the face value of it? There is clearly blasphemy that is on the song and it's directed to God and, he, and Kendrick Lamar is essentially supplanting himself as being a Christ-like figure. Now I'm gonna dive into the lyrics right now, but one of the things I wanna point out is that on Damn, we had a peeking or a preview of what some would call Hebrew Israelite theology. I wanna be mindful of how I present this because being a Hebrew Israelite, excuse me, being a Hebrew Israelite is a cultural thing it is not a theological position. And what I mean by that is that I have friends, good friends that are Hebrew Israelites or identify in that way with very sound theology and very Christ-like principles within them. On the flip side, we could have Christians that identify as Christian, but when it comes to their theology are way off point with their belief system. Mormons, for example, would consider themselves Christians. Um, many Pentecostal churches that endorse certain belief systems that I don't think are consistent with scripture would call themselves Christians. But that is a cultural identification of who they are rather than a theolo theological de definition of who they are. The reason I make this distinction is because the theology that is coming through on the Dam project is in line with a few fringe sects, what I would say, of Hebrew Isla Israelite belief system. Now, what this kind of ties into, and I, I don't want to do it uh, an injustice by explaining it too loosely, but it mirrors to me very close to what the five percenters believe, the five percent nation. If you're familiar with the five percent nation, they believe that um, they are essentially God incarnate. That's the belief system that they were made in the image of God, which is true, but that they are God incarnate, that the black man is God incarnate. Hebrew Israelites don't share that exact belief, but it is very similar in that they believe Christ was sent as an example and that since they are made in the image of God, they hold a unique and important and historic value in history that no one else holds, which is, um, I think, again, very true to an extent, but that they embody Christ or they embody Yeshua Messiah in the flesh on earth. What that means is that you're Christ, I'm Christ, anyone else who identifies as a Hebrew Israelite becomes Christ. Now, again, this is a fringe belief system. This is not the end all be all. This belief system usually ties into a limited salvation where not anyone can repent and believe um, and become and, and adopt the salvation of Christ or receive the salvation of Christ and a few other very, again, fringe theological beliefs. I'm not lumping the Hebrew Israelite movement as a, as a whole into this belief system. But since we saw that on Dam, seeing the lyrics on Family Ties makes a lot more sense when observed at uh, under a microscope. So now that we have that context, now that we've built that kind of story around it, I think it's important. Let's dive into the actual lyrics. One of the first things that I noticed when I listened to the song, because I, I, I was a fan of Kendrick Lamar from Dan, I was excited to see what direction he would take his music and his his uh, his lyrics, given what he kind of expressed on Dan. Would he get closer to God? Would he drift away from God? Kanye West had come out with Jesus as King. So this was kind of an interesting moment of, is popular culture going to adopt the gospel message in different ways and different facets? And since Kendrick Lamar is not really in the spotlight, you don't really know what he's up to for the most part. But the first line that caught my attention and really made me kind of sit back in my chair was this. He said, hold on, y'all playing with me, man. I am the Omega PG Lang Roly Gain SIE. Don't address me unless it's with four letters. Now, right away, that kind of caught me off guard a little bit because he said, I am the Omega. Now, if we know the notion of God in the Bible, there's multiple times where he is identified as the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end, which means he is eternal. He is, you know, omnipotent, omnipresent. He is eternal, he is God, the Alpha and the Omega. You know, to Moses he said, uh, tell the Israelites that I am who I am. This, this I am is an incredibly important denunciation because it's saying I am, I am like everything. This is a powerful statement. So when Kendrick says I am the Omega, 
what is the implication here? You know, and that's like the first step back, like, okay, I'm the Omega, whoa, 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 hold on. What are you talking about here? And then the next couple of lines, he says, don't address me unless it's with the four letters. Now, a lot of people might say, oh, he's talking about he's the GOAT, right? That's four letters, the greatest of all times, an acronym commonly used. Right alongside that, the four letters could also be the Tetragrammaton, which is Yahweh, the actual name of God as identified in the Hebrew Bible. When it's written now in Hebrew, it's four letters. They actually skip letters in English. It's just Y-H-W-H. So again, when I heard that I'm the Omega, don't address me unless it's with four letters, I was like, okay, hold on. What's, <laughs> what's going on here? I did kind of hold myself at bay to say, okay, I won't jump to a conclusion. But as the song progresses, we see more and more of this language appear. He goes on to say, I'm not a trending topic, I'm a prophet. I answer to Metatron and Gabriel. Now, <laughs> this is incredibly significant because at, at face value, you don't know what that is, but let's look at what Metatron actually is. Like, what does that even mean, right? Now let's read this in full context. This is obviously just a simple search, but you can see right here at the top, it goes on to say that Metatron is a demon. This is the name of an angel that is tied in with the Jew Jewish Kabbalah mysticism. Now let's read exactly what it is. Metatron is not a figure of the Hebrew Bible, but his name appears briefly in the several passages of the Talmud. His legends are predominantly found in mystical Kab Kabbalistic text. He is variously identified as the prince or angel of the presence, as Michael the archangel, or as Enoch after his bodily ascent into heaven. Now, that is kind of a wild concept. He is saying that, again, tying back to what we saw in Humble, Holy Spirit descending, fire upon his head, sitting at the Last Supper in the place of Jesus. Now we have him saying that I am Metatron, which could be interpreted a number of ways, but is pulled straight from uh, Kabbalah mysticism, which is pretty much Jewish spiritualism. If you know what the Talmud is, that is actually a book that is extra biblical outside of the Old Testament that, um, the Jewish belief system and many Jewish um, uh, belief systems actually adopt as kind of like fact. That, that is like their New Testament in a way. It is uh, canon to them. They study that and believe that 100%. And not to say that historical information in the Talmud is not valid, but spiritual information is absolutely not valid from a Christian standpoint. Now let's talk about Gabriel. Gabriel is a name that's more familiar from a Christian context. Who is Gabriel? Well, let's do a quick search on that as well. A lot simpler. We find this in Luke chapter 1, 27 and 28. Gabriel is the archangel who announced the Virgin Mary that she had been chosen to bear the Son of God. So again, Gabriel is an archangel. Metatron is archangel. So Kendrick is saying, I answer to Metatron and Gabriel. Now, now, as we progress through the song, a lot of pride, a lot of arrogance, Kendrick Lamar doing what rappers do best, right? Which is fine. And if you were to dismiss him calling himself the Omega, him saying, don't address me unless it's with four letters, which again, I think we can clearly identify as being Yahweh rather than GOAT. If we want to dismiss him saying, I'm one of the 70, we could try to dismiss all that. But then at the very end of the, his verse, he makes it very clear what he's saying. And he goes on to say, I am the Elohim the rebirth, if you want to talk to the Father, you have to go through me first. Now, Christ said, if you have known the Son, if you have known me, or if you have seen me rather, you have seen the Father. To know the Father is to know me. Christ is our only intercessor between us and God. Previously, it was Moses with the Israelite people, and now it is Christ. Christ has taken the place as Moses prophesied that someone greater than I, a prophet likened unto myself, will come to you. That is Christ. Christ is our intercessor, our mediator. He goes to the Father on our behalf. And here you have Kendrick Lamar saying that one, he is the Elohim, the Elohim being the name for the triune God, the Elohim being the plural uh, name for God, the rebirth, which we could easily identify as Christ being resurrected. And then he says, if you want to talk to the Father, you have to talk to me first. There is no denying where he stands theologically and what his belief systems are. And he's made it very clear in this verse with a multitude of lines on what he is expressing. If you want to be nitpicky and argue about the four letters being goat and not Yahweh, okay but it doesn't deny what he's been blatantly saying, that he is Metatron, he answers to Gabriel, you should talk, you should, um, he is Elohim, he's the rebirth, he is the Omega, and more than anything, if you wanna to talk to the Father, you have to talk to me first. What's interesting is that Genius Lyrics actually keeps Father capitalized, which leads me to believe that they knew exactly what he was saying when he said it. 
So with that being said, as we kind of break all this down, what's the big takeaway, right? I gave you my three reasons, but what's the big takeaway? I think the big takeaway is that as we become more and more as a society drifted and distant from God, there are going to be things that are attractive. There are going to be things that are appealing. There are going to be things that we don't want to let go. And as much as we might not want to use the word idolatry, oftentimes we have created idols out of these celebrities, these musicians, and these creatives, these businessmen, these insert whatever you want there. The fact is we have created idols out of them and it's very hard when somebody breaks down your idols, when somebody tears down your idols. But the truth of the matter is Kendrick Lamar has made it very clear where he stands theologically. He's made it very clear what his belief system is on this verse. And this isn't to say that he is too far gone or he is lost, right? Kendrick Lamar, I believe just like anybody can accept the full gift of salvation through Christ Jesus by accepting him as his Lord and Savior and repenting, turning from his sins and his wicked ways. Now, I have to do that all the time. Every believer that I know struggles with sin. We all are on a constant journey to repentance. Paul says in the book of Romans, why does my flesh war with me and do the thing which I hate it to do? But the fact that it's warring against me, with me reveals that the law, the commandments of God are good and that ultimately we need to rely on Christ as our salvation. We can't do it by our own volition. So Kendrick Lamar is no different in that sense. And my boycott or my, my um, absence of being a fan from him does not denote where I think his spiritual life is going to be in the end times, but rather it places an emphasis on my relationship with God and the things that I won't allow. If Kendrick Lamar released a song and said a Conde, you know, don't call your wife your wife, don't call your kids your kids, they're my kids now, that's my wife now, um, your parents aren't your parents, they're my parents now, I'm gonna treat them how I want. If Kendrick Lamar did that with my wife and my children and my kids and whatever, you know, uh, uh, which would never happen, right? But if he did do that, I would immediately stop being a fan because he's attacked something that I love. And in the same way, if you do not hate your mother, your brother, your father, your sister, your children, your wife, uh, in comparison with the love of God, then why would you settle for him talking this way about our Lord and Savior? So again, guys, I hope this is very uh, helpful and beneficial. I, I hope that we're studious about what we listen and what we guard our hearts with. And if you're not a believer watching this video, but was just curious about it, I hope you understand from a Christian worldview why we believe and why we do the things that we do. Um, I think Again, Kendrick Lamar is a great artist. I think he's well accomplished. I think he's done a lot of really powerful things. One of the most memorable moments in, in uh, hip hop listening when I was a fan of Kendrick Lamar is when he released the, the song I on uh, To Pimp a Butterfly. And the song actually at the beginning of the music video said Jesus is King, which I thought was a compelling thing. And you hear those thematics throughout it. And even on Good Kid Mad City, you have the Lord's Prayer weave throughout the entire album. So Kendrick Lamar is not too far gone. He knows the truth. And if we pray for him and compel the Holy Spirit to move on his heart and he receives it, I still think we could see him in heaven and have a glorious meal together. But with that being said, guys, again, it's FLF here. Thank you so much for listening. Again, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and hopefully bless somebody with this content who might be listening or struggling with the same artist. Uh, anyways, though, God bless you and have a great rest of your time. But anyways, God bless you and let's continue to light up Babylon together.